decided to look at the scriptures last time, our last session about joy. And we saw several factors about joy. And one of the things we discovered is that joy is a tool that you use to check, to assess, to evaluate spiritual strength, character, commitment, and also to check if you are in alignment with the will of God. And we said that anything that you do, remember you have to include joy in it. I just want to make a, a very short, a very quick uh, uh, summary of what we had touched last, on the last session. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise be to Jesus. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That amen. There are people who are not saying amen, so I'm, I'm waiting for them. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. Come on, shout with me. The joy of the Lord is my strength. You can do better one more time. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. We also discover that anything you do without joy cannot be accepted. Your kingdom service that is done outside joy or without joy being factored in, it will not be accepted. And that's why in Deuteronomy 28 verse 47 we saw uh, God giving the children of Israel an instruction that remember that if you don't serve me with joy, and in the banners of all things that I've given to you. He said that you shall serve your enemies. That the Lord will send against you. And I wish to base my topic today. I want us to look at, very, at a very important aspect. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. And today I want us to look at what does joy power our access to? Or what does joy give us access to? I feel like we did not touch on that aspect. What we did on last, in the last session... We just touched on uh, the, the foundation. Amen. It's a very extensive topic. And by the way, never, never think that when uh, some of these topics that look and seem common, when God decides to bring us into a place of more knowledge and understanding of these things, never claim to know. Just have a neutral perspective, a neutral heart ready to receive. Praise be to Jesus. Amen. Yeah, because God is extensive. God is so progressive. God is so deep. Never claim to say that you know all of God. God is so, so extensive. The Bible said that how unsearchable are his ways. The Bible said that the Bible says that his ways are past finding. If we decide to talk about a topic, for, for instance, joy, like the way we began, it will, when we, by the help of the Holy Ghost, we will touch on aspects that maybe may be new to most of us. And I know that we are being helped by the Spirit of God. So the best we can do is to have a heart of learning. There is an attitude I usually have. Whenever I listen to people teaching the Word of God, I assume I don't know anything. I come with an open heart ready to learn. Because grace has been dispensed differently. They are different. There are people who have different graces. The way a person can teach about joy is very different from another person because their dimensions, their dealings, God has according to the grace he has bestowed upon everyone. And the grace you carry may be different from mine. So we need one another and we belong to one another. Praise be to Jesus. So don't assume you know. It takes humility and meekness for you to receive the engrafted word that is ready to build you up. Praise be to Jesus. So today I want us to look at this. What does joy power our access to? Or what does joy give us access to? Let me call this part two of what we were discussing as the access power of joy. Number one, joy gives us access to the revealed will of God. Without joy, it is impossible for you to find access to divine revelation. We say that the revealed will of God is the peculiar, is the idiosyncratic, or it is the custom-made or tailor made the will of God for you. The will of God is in two dimensions. We have the written will, which is the word of God. And we have the revealed will, which happens to be 
that information that the Holy Ghost discloses to a man part-time. Praise be to Jesus. For instance, for example, when the Lord sends you to Mombasa, he has to mention Mombasa because we don't have Mombasa in the Bible. So what are you going to do? You have to hear the word Mombasa. Are we together? Now, when he, began, when he reveals an instruction, when he reveals his heart and his mind concerning something that pertains to your life every season, that is what we call the revealed will of God. Your revealed will of God may be different from mine. I repeat, they may be different. But if we analyze them from the scriptures, we'll discover that these instructions from God that may be tailor-made to you, they are always consistent with the nature of God. There is no time God will give you an instruction or there is no uh, time God will reveal his will that is contrary to what he has done. So, as much as the will of God is revealed... It is, it is to bear witness with the written word. Haziwachani. Praise be to God. Let me, let me take it deeper so that someone can understand. For example, you are trusting God for a spouse. And uh, because of the disposition of your heart, you're already engaged. And at the same time, you're really asking God, who will be my spouse? Because you're on the search. So because at the beginning of that relationship you did not involve God, what happens is if you decide not to put aside those idols in your heart, God might give you a response that is consistent with what is in your heart. It's like you began something without him. So halfway you're asking, Lord, is this your will? And because your heart is so much possessed, so much possessed with that which you claim to seek God for, and yet you know your heart has already made a decision. God is likely to answer you according to that. So, this is a brother or sister that is married, but you are there asking, you know, God, I know he's the one. I know he's the one. I know he's the one. And also, even we have people that some, to, to some extent have found dreams as a way of confirming, because dreams come from so many quarters. They are dreams that can come from the dark side. They are dreams that are, can come because of the intensity of workload you've had during the day. We have soulish dreams. So, when this brother comes to your dream and proposes to you, it may look like it's a confirmation. But how can God give you a brother who's married? Is that consistent with the word of God? No. Are you getting the point? So, when it comes to this revealed will, we have to understand that it has to be consistent with the nature of God. It will never contradict the nature of God. There is no day God can reveal his will that will propagate you, that will influence you to hate. Because God is not hate, God is love. Are you getting the point? Yeah, so when these things, it's good for you sometimes to subject them, measure them and evaluate them using the word of God. As much as God speaks, as much as you are using the word of God, the Bible, because we are people at that basic level, they use the Bible, the word of God, to extract the voice of God, which is okay. But remember in the same Bible, we had witches who spoke. We had donkeys that spoke. Not every word in the Bible is the word from God. Are you getting the point? So we have to submit it, judge it by the sovereignty of the scriptures. We have to judge it by and the nature of God that have been revealed from the scriptures. Are we together? Yeah, so joy gives us access to the revealed will of God. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 12. Isaiah chapter 12. Let's start from verse 1. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 12. Let's start from verse 1. He said, and in the day, in that day, thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Though Okay, give us new King James. Uh, uh, I love King James passion, but for, for the sake of most of us, we want a, a simpler version that will help us understand. Praise be to Jesus. 
Let's sit together. And in the day you will say, Oh Lord, I will praise you though you are angry with me. Your anger is turned away. Look at that. There are so many aspects and dimensions of God. Hallelujah. Second verse. Behold, God is my salvation. Is God your salvation? If God is, is God your salvation? Let that yes be stronger. Is God your salvation? Yes. Stay with me because we are about to bump on a very, very interesting journey. We are just about to, to, to glide as the Holy Ghost will help us. Hallelujah. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For yeah, the Lord is my strength. And so, he also has become my salvation. I don't want to go deeper in that next verse. Now, that is my emphasis now. Say that, therefore, with joy, you will draw waters from the wells of salvation. With joy, you will withdraw or draw waters from the wells of salvation. Praise be to Jesus. Now, the word water there is a figure of speech. It's symbolic. And the word water we discovered last Sunday, and I, we can go back to that scripture, Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 to 26. We discover that this water is the word of God. And that word of God is the word we discovered, is the word Rema. So Rema, we have said it is the revealed, the inspired word of God. Praise be to Jesus. Now, it takes joy for you to find access to deeper dimensions of God. Have you discovered you will never engage God according to your terms? Because the salvation you are enjoying is his salvation. Wokovu ambao unafurahia ni wokovu wake si wako. Na kama kitu ni ya mtu lazima uta engage hiyo kitu kulingana na zile terms huyo mtu ameleta kwa meza. Bwana asifiwe sana. So we have to be very sensitive whenever we read the scriptures. Be very very meticulous and very sensitive when some words are being mentioned. Because we lose it because we we think that the Bible is a fairy tale, it's a story. Let me tell you the Bible is not a historical book. It might have historical facts, but it's not an historical book. The Bible is not a scientific book. It might, have his, it, it might have scientific facts, but it's not a scientific book. This is a book of life. You can imagine that this book, everyone, it is the most selling book in our times. And you cannot update it. It is up to date. Bonus, if you will. Yes, the word of God is life. So, this notion when we grew up, and I don't, I don't blame most of us. I think we had this uh, perspective that we thought that the Bible was a, a storybook, a kind of a fairy tale storybook. So, some of these things we struggle to believe because we are still trapped in the fantasy world. In that side, that these are things that we imagine happened, but we know that these things are realities. Praise the Lord. Wezi interpreti Biblia bila muandishi wake. Na muandishi wa Biblia ni Roho Mtakatifu. Aliandika Biblia kupitia writers wengi, lakini yeye ndio muandishi. He is the author. So you can't interpret the, 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 these writings without engaging the author, the spirit of the author. Are we together? Yeah, sometimes I, I find people debating. People saying that, ah, Solomon had many wives. Pastor, why, cannot, why can't I have many wives? You see, so those kinds of discussions, unnecessary debates, it's because they have not engaged the author, the spirit of God. Let me tell you, the Holy Ghost is so sweet. This scripture, we can dwell in, in this scripture. We can teach this scripture as the Holy Ghost helps us. We can teach it for the next three weeks and we will not repeat a sermon because it's so deep. He's saying that therefore with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. It means that salvation has so much for us. But for you to find access, one of the things that will be required of you is a certain posture of your heart. Your heart must assume a posture of joy. And we say that joy is not an emotion. Joy is not happiness. Remember we also say that every happy person is not a joy person. 
a person that is joyful. We have people that are going through very challenging situations and times. But as long as the joy of the Lord is seated, deep seated in their hearts. They are strong. Praise be to Jesus. Not every happy person you see is a joyful person. Count it a blessing when you have happiness and joy at the same time. But let me tell you something. In this journey of the Lord, in this journey we signed up, we signed up into, many times are those moments that we will experience a lot of sufferings. That's why when you come to this serious work with God, there are so many sufferings you go through. And these sufferings are sufferings that will raise you up, will teach you. Because the Bible says that Jesus, the son of God, learned obedience by the sufferings he went through. So, what do you want to learn? For you to learn in this, in this kingdom, for you to learn, hello, are you with me? Yes. yes, you have to bear the consciousness that you have a price to pay. Some of the sufferings will be, sometimes you'll be rejected. Sometimes you have no, you'll, you'll, not, you'll not have the privilege to enjoy what others are enjoying because of your personal consecration with the Lord. You know, for, for instance, football is so good. But if God comes and, tell you, and tells you from today, don't watch football, it's not bad. But you see, according to your consecration with the Lord that powers your Christianity to make it productive, you have to put aside football. Now, that is a kind of suffering. So how to enjoy come out to Engine? That's why we have to be guided. Our lives must be guided. What will make your Christianity fruitful? What will make you walk in dimensions of power? Is consistent with the consecrations that are personal and instructed by the Holy Ghost to you. Breakfast is good. For instance, if God tells you in the next one year, I don't want to see you taking breakfast. But you see, it's good. But you discover, if you disobey, you'll keep on. There's something that will begin to leak out. There's some power that will begin to leak out. So, now, this scripture says that, I'm just using that to bring you to, to bring something to perspective. That there is so much in salvation. That for you to draw out, for you to extract the mind of God, the will of God, that is personal, tailor-made for you. Joy must be in place. It's one of the aspects one of the elements that must be in the equation. So without joy, you can't access waters, revelations. You can't access divine intelligence. You can't access certain dimensions of knowledge. You can't access certain dimensions of revelation. There are some prophetic corridors you, you will never enter until joy is in place. So it's not that God is not, or God is, uh, is not hearing your prayers. Have you ever contended in the, in the place of prayer concerning a matter? But you did not receive anything from the Lord. You are not able to draw from the wells of salvation. And those things that you're supposed to draw, these were the results, uh, 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 the solutions that you have been looking for. For you to have them, for you to have the wisdom, because these things come to you, they are revealed to you to solve a problem. Because God allows you to peep into the realms of the spirit, to know the position, the present position of things, according to the mind and the heart of God. So without joy, you cannot draw. You can't draw. You see how, how, how this thing is? Without joy, you can't draw from the wells of salvation. Now, when God called you to himself, his intention was that you are not, you're not supposed to remain a well. You're supposed to become a river. But we have so many believers that are wells. You remember John 7 verse 37? 
very, very powerful. Jesus was crying out, is there anyone that is thirsty? Let him come. And I will give him water and he will never thirst. Say that out of his belly shall flow rivers. 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 Wow. Let's look at this. Let's start from verse 37. John 7 verse 37. Thank you. So that on the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart or out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. Next verse. But this is spoke concerning the spirit whom those believing in him will receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. The presence of the Holy Ghost reveals the fact that Jesus Christ died and he rose again. Because he was not in the sin by this time because Jesus Christ was not yet glorified. So the fact that you are filled by the Holy Ghost is proof, is proof that he died and he rose. He died and he rose. So in the well of salvation, there is so much. But for you to draw, joy must be in place. No joy, no access to the revealed will of God over your life. Praise the Lord. So through genuine joy and rejoicing, we, can, we are given access to the mind of God. The revealed will of God for you. I've said no joy, no access. Tell your neighbor no joy, no access. Tell your neighbor no joy, no access. I know there are people who believe that God will never answer them. I remember <laughs> I had an inter uh, we were interacting in the days of uh, fellowship when we were starting. This lady came and said, Pastor, I think when you pray for us, God listens to your prayers more than us. And you know, in my heart, I was so much intrigued by that statement. And asked her, what is this thing that makes you think that we are more advantaged and special than you? Because the provision is for everybody. And Kambia, you need to deal with that mindset. That is why maybe you have not been able to touch, contact, and communicate, and commune with God because of that perception. You have to deal with it. Nobody is advantaged. All of us have access to the same spirit. All of us have access to the same spiritual capital. Nobody is disadvantaged. Bona if you will. Now, for you to draw from the wells of salvation, it could be prophecy. Praise be to Jesus. Yeah. Just check. When you're mad, it's even hard for you to pray. When joy begins to depart from your heart, when joy leaves, your heart takes a different form. And it is very hard for you to connect and contact with, with the Lord. Because part of what is required from us is that our service to him or our offerings to him must be done in joy or with joy. Praise be to God. Yeah, you might be going through a tough situation, but I want to tell you this. It is not yet over until your heart, you allow joy to depart from your heart. That's when the chances of you backsliding are very high because that joy that you're supposed to latch on was your strength. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. We say that a joyless believer is a weak believer. A joyless believer is a disloyal believer. Disloyal. We saw the Acts. We read the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5 from verse 40. How the apostles were persecuted. And something strange. Verse 41 said that they counted, they counted it all joy. They saw it worthy. They counted it worthy that they would go through the persecution. And like many average believers, they will take a posture of complaining. They will take a, a posture of raising insults against one another. But you see, the apostles, they gave us a good template. Now, Leona, Walisema, 
kumbe ni heshima kubwa sana kuwa Mungu ameona tupitie shida kama hii wakati huu ukiubidi kuhusu safari watu wengi sana hawatakubaliana na wewe kwa sababu wanasema love ya Mungu iko na Yesu alipitia shida zote ili wewe uenjoy uongo that is deception the bible says that we should arm ourselves with this mindset because he suffered that we should also arm ourselves with this mindset first peter chapter 4 from verse 1 we should arm ourselves with this mindset but an average believer well well they think that god is unfair to them they think that god is unfair yes look therefore since christ suffered for us in the flesh are you in the flesh realm are you in the flesh are you flesh he says that arm yourselves also with this same mindset in other words he's trying to tell us that never think that you will be exempted from these sufferings arm yourself with the same mindset the way the son of man suffered you are bound to suffer and suffering in so many forms suffering is in so many it takes so many shapes and forms praise be to god and he say that for he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin what does that scripture reveal that the whole essence of suffering is to deliver you from the influence of the flesh because that's where sin domiciles the moment you live walking in the spirit operating from the influence of the holy ghost and shift and operate from the realms of the flesh you are bound to sin So God put a system to deal with that to crush the adamic nature to crush it that's the system of suffering So God wants to deliver you from the influence of the flesh that is likely to deviate you from his plan So what he did he will allow you to go through certain seasons certain situations because God has a season with you he has something with you and if it is the flesh that is blocking him He has put up a system to make sure that the black, that, that, that flesh will not stand between you and him. Can I say something? Praise be to Jesus. Many people are one with the cross. Most of the believers they You see you see the way you can carry the cross. You can carry the cross. Okay, let me take it this way. How many remember Simon of Cyrene? What did he do? He helped Jesus to carry the cross. Who was crucified on the cross? On that cross? Jesus, Jesus was crucified. Yes. Now, have you ever seen have you ever heard the name Simon of Cyrene mentioned anywhere? You know why you never hear him mentioned anywhere? He carried the cross but he was not one with the cross. Jesus was one with the cross. Praise be to God. Yeah. Carrying the cross is good, but make sure you are one with the cross. Praise be to Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, let's go to the second thing that the joy of God gives us access to. Joel chapter 1. Start from verse 10. Hallelujah. Amen. Joel chapter 1. Start from verse 10. You see when 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 we talk about joy most of the people who think that we are talking about happiness and yet we know that joy is a departure from the corridors of happiness and you move now because happiness is flesh based but joy is spirit So don't make decisions based on happiness you will miss it. Make decisions based on the joy of God because it reveals something. Joel chapter 1 from verse 10 together. 1 to 3 go. Let's read. The field is wasted. The land mourns. For the grain is ruined. The new wine is dried up. The oil fails. Eesh. 
What happens? Yes, be ashamed, you farmers. Why? Wail you vine dressers for the wheat and the barley. Because the harvest of the field, they have perished. Verse 12. Look at this. Read together. One, two, three, go. The vine has dried up. The fig tree has withered. Yes. Uh huh. And the apple tree, I don't want to go to details about those. Uh, proceed. Why? Surely joy has withered away from the sons of men. Joy has departed. And one of the ways you will discover that joy has departed, there is an unusual famine. And you show dryness. We have people that are going through financial famine because joy, joy has withered away from the sons of men. So, what happened is because you did not understand what joy does, and please listen, please listen. There is something that is important. Imagine, you know, yeah, no, no, don't even imagine. The presence of you doing things or the fact that you are doing things with joy in the equation as your service to the Lord, it, it, it gives a certain, a certain kind of protection against the enemy that the Lord is likely to send to those people who are serving him without joy. Now remember, this dryness is not dryness that is occasioned by demons and devils. No. It's a famine that the Lord himself has occasioned against people that want to engage him without joy. So, joy gives us access to rewards upon our kingdom service. So, these people were supposed to harvest, but there was no harvest. These people have been giving, they have been serving. These people have been doing what is right in terms of service in God's kingdom. But 10 years has passed. I don't know what time, what kind of time has passed according to your case. But it is a revealer that at some point, joy departed from your heart. Anytime you reap what doesn't look like what you saw, could be a revealer that joy withered from your heart. How can I sow seeds? Just for me to come and sow nothing, you know, reap nothing. Look at that. You think it's the will of God? These are simple elements that we have ignored. God is not moved. God will not accept you just because you came in church happy. God will not accept what you gave just because you gave it happily. He wants to check your heart because joy is a heart matter. So if joy is present, be very much assured that your rewards are on the way. Without this, you can't access rewards. Have you ever been, I've seen people who have served this kingdom of God for so many years, but their lives are still the same. Because people have this mentality when they serve, they are serving the pastor. The pastor has nothing to give you. The minister has nothing to give you. Your rewards are with the Lord. So he's the one. So we have to engage him according to his terms. Remember, joy is part of what is needed in the equation for him to release your rewards. It's without joy. How will God intervene in your issues? And yet, as, as, as you do your spiritual service, prayer and fasting is part of spiritual service. You are doing it without joy. When will you secure answers? Will you really, will, are you sure you're going to have answers, rewards on your engagement? You know, you will not have. So we have low returns of, on investment. We invested so much. But kile tumepata, imi ya kakumi, hailinganishwe, hayesi kwa compared na ile input tuliweka. Tumeka input mingi sana, lakini ile mazao, Wengine atawa mekosa. Wengine atani kidogo sana. 
ni Mungu tu aliwahurumia Listen to me children of God Please listen to me carefully The devil will always push you in the corridors of complaining in the corridors of questioning God in blasphemous manners as if God is cheating on you to bless others. He will push you to make certain statements. And let me say this. When you come to those moments, remember that the same God that you are raising accusation against, there is no court you can take him. There is no court you will take him. There is no court order you give to him. He is a king. Let that be in your Hakuna siku utareza accusation against mungu. Jua hivo. Baba, hauja fanya. Mimi ni mefanya kila kitu nafa kufanya. Mungu bado hauja kuja. Inafa ufike mahali useme, baba, hata usipo kuja. Nita kutumikia na moyo. Na furaha. I will serve you with a joyful heart. But you see, for a man to come to that place, God will make sure he will introduce you to some dimensions of suffering because you are still having confidence in your own ambition. So for, you to, for, for him to withdraw you on that, so he has to expose you to certain kinds of sufferings until you come to a place whereby you are so broken, you've come to the end of yourself. Now that's when he can just come and raise you up because God is an expert of raising the dead. Any area that you've not died will never carry his glory. Hakuna. Will never carry his glory. So the sufferings are to make us die to self. It's not about you. It's, it has never been about you. You are called the tree of righteousness. It means that you need to bring forth fruit. There is no tree that has ever consumed his, his own fruits. So God has anointed you. God has brought you this far. God has invested on you. You think it is just for you to enjoy the whole essence is ordained that we, sh we need to carry one another's burden. Praise the Lord. So, joy gives us access to our rewards upon any kingdom service. Without joy, no reward. Usi complain, usi embe munga na kukon. Ha-ha. Tut, anang, he, he. Jeremiah 17 verse 11. Jeremiah 17 verse 11. You know sometimes there are, there's, there, are, there are things you can't explain. You can't explain. Start from verse 9. Start from verse 9. Let's read. 1, 2, 3, go. Above what? All things. Above what? All. all. The word there that we need to be very keen about is all. It means that even you, you are not in a position of knowing the things your heart sustains unless the Lord reveals them to you. The heart is so deceitful. Because there are things that will sit inside you that you never knew you, 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 you carry them. We, we unona sahi uko mahambo, unona sahi huwezi forniket, goja. You will discover if the Lord doesn't help you and reveal these things to you, introduce you to you, it's just a moment in time, an opportunity that will just present itself. You will not think otherwise. And people will even ask themselves, is he not the brother who was preaching about righteousness? The heart is deceitful. Imebeba is like a vast forest. You will never know what is inside. The Lord himself must introduce you to yourself. He must introduce you to yourself. You don't know what you have capacity to do. Pastor, mimi, mimi ni koma minifu kwa ndo yangu. Sawa. Koja. Ka opportunity kadogo kajitokoze. Kajitokeze tu kidogo. Kilo lisema kitajaribiwa. So he's saying here that the heart 
is very deceitful above all things. You never know who you are until the Lord begins to reveal the deep-seated things in your heart. That's when you'll appreciate the help of God. Praise be to God. Says that. And desperately wicked. Who can know it? It means that even you don't know it. You don't know your heart. So don't claim you know your heart. You don't know it. Next verse. Now this is where the deal breaker is. I, the Lord, I search the heart. Yes. To give every man according to his what does he check? What does he evaluate? The state of your heart. Because the state of your heart will determine the thoughts in your mind. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You will not be better more than the thoughts that you sustain. So he's saying here that I, the Lord, when it comes to rewarding, my reward system is not based on how men evaluate. Men evaluate by outside appearance. Men evaluate by face value. But I, the Lord, I journey deeper. I go to the center. The heart matter. That's where. That's what determines if I reward. A brother joins church, gives his life to Jesus. Within six months, there's so much progress, both spiritually and even, you know, economical progress and all that. You that has been in church for more than 20 years, nothing to show. Nothing to show. Mungu si man. He checks there. That's why you are saying, joy is a heart matter. It's a posture of the heart. Imagine if the, if the apostles would have complained. What would have happened? I believe that they would not have another chance to preach the gospel. Because the Bible said after, the next, after they were persecuted and they cannot did all joy worthy of going through the persecution. The Bible said that daily they went from house to house. Where did they receive the grace from? What would have persecuted but what is this thing that powered the free flow of grace that they, did? they were not able to stop this thing? It is the joy of the Lord, which was their strength. So they overcame based on the level of strength they had. People don't back, backslide because of challenges. People backslide because they have allowed joy to wither from their hearts. Guard the joy of God. Even your prayer even prayer. Tears have no authority in the realms of the spirit. I know you know how to cry. I know you love crying. My wife calls them, you know, me and my wife have a name for them. We call them the Mega Tears Association. People that, you know, just cry. You know, people are, people are different. I'm not, I'm not saying that it's bad, no. I just want to inform you that in that realm, Tears have no weight. Is the post of your heart. Utalia ujaze ndo mzima hapa. Na urudi bure. Kama moyo wako. Roe yako haiko sawa. Anytime you see God intervening. On any case. That you cried out for his help. Apart from his mercy. When you see him come. Some of these things. For some of these things, he found them in place in your heart. That's why he came. He said that count it all joy when you go through what? Trials and tribulation. That's what separates you from the world. The world will complain, but you rejoice. Because as long as you rejoice, very shortly you will overcome. Your strength is latched and pegged on that joy. Of the Lord. When you lose it, you miss out on rewards. You miss out on your access of God, the will of God over your life. Praise be to Jesus. 
Praise be to the Lord. I pray for somebody, even that brother or sister who is watching. That joy will not wither from your heart. Someone may ask, Pastor, how does joy wither from the hearts of men? It's so simple. Where did it come from? It came from you engaging the word. We read in the last part, Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 16. So that when your words were found, they were like joy and rejoicing in my heart. I did eat them. I did eat them. And they were like joy and rejoicing in my heart. Let's go to Jeremiah 15, verse 16. Your words were found and I ate them. In other words, I meditated upon them. Anytime you find something from the Lord, don't be quick. Internalize it. Internalize it. When God comes and tells you, this jacket is red, internalize what he has said. Because your perspective may be different from what he said. So, meditation is the act of having intense thoughts in intense pondering of that which has been released as a minute information in your spirit. Can I? Until your thoughts become the thoughts of the Holy Ghost over that word so that you can extract an instruction from it. So he said when that word came, it did not just come as a prophetic word. It also carried a package of joy. God attached something. So one of the ways that will make you miss out or leak out the joy of the Lord when you stay far away from engaging the word of God. Why is it when you want to read the Bible, you fall asleep? It's an attack against your spirituality. Why is it sort of when we have Bible studies, prayer meetings. That's when shuguli zinapatikana mingi. Unasikia unaitiwa chama. Unasikia wageni wamekutembelea. Kampango tu kametokea because the devil is so so cunning. He's so wise. He will never participate in anything that will make off your spiritual prosperity. He will never contribute. Never. Because he knows that's where your strength lies. You can imagine how much has he succeeded? How many times has he succeeded to block you, block your understanding, introduce unnecessary and unusual sleepings? You're just about to read the word of God. You're just about to listen to this tape. Usingizi heavy. Inakuskuma. Unasukia nisakwina mbili asubui. He's so skillful. Remember, remember, joy can wither from your heart. Joy can wither from your heart. Joy can wither from your heart. Don't forget that. When it withers, you will do everything passionately, but without joy. the joy of the Lord is your strength. Praise be to God. Amen. Let's look at one more. Then we close. Let's look at another access power of the spirit of joy. What does joy gives us, give us access to? Let's look at Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17. We'll read down to verse 19. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17. Habakkuk 3.17. Hallelujah. Can we read it? All right. One, two, three, go. Though the fig tree may not blossom as you want, things may not be working as you desire. No, though the labor of the olive may fail, 
and the fields yield no food. Though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd. Next verse. Yet. <laughs> Have you not realized that anytime we mention joy, there is a word that will always come. Salvation. That's why David says that restore the joy of my salvation. Now, now we did finish this. Next verse. Next verse. Verse 19. Listen. The Lord God is my strength. Ah. He will make my feet like fierce trees. He will make my feet like what? Fierce Now, where did this strength come from? Joy. Even at the face of negativity, Habakkuk is saying, I will choose to rejoice. Because what joy does, it provokes divine intervention. Now, let's, let, 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 let's finish. He will make my feet like deer's feet. And he will make me walk on high hills. Have you discovered? He will, he will, he will. That is not positivity. No, that is not positivity. You know, they say you have to be positive. Is the word of God doesn't promote positivity. That's not the ministry of the word of God. It declares the truth. The truth is, I am lifted. Even at the face of hardships, the truth is, I am already blessed. That is the truth. So the Bible declares the truth. It doesn't doesn't support the truth. It declares the truth. At the face of negativity, at the face of persecution, at the face of failure, when things are not working, he said that, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the Lord of my salvation. And because of that joy, God will release strength. Because that joy is my strength. And that joy came from the Lord. And he said he will make my feet like deer's feet. And he will make me walk on high places. Elevation. Elevation. Promotion. Can I assume, can I ask a question? Let's assume that you are an employer. And you have this one employee that keeps on complaining. Even if they are performing well in the company, I believe there is a point that they will become a nuisance. What will you do? Will you promote them? Katu hapoewe. We don't want to lose you, so they will manage you. I've seen that happen before. These things, they also reflect what happens in the realms of the spirit. There are, there are people who never test promotion and elevation because joy has departed. He said that when things are not working, when things seem not to bear fruit, after I've given all my effort and I still get failure, yet I will rejoice. Look at that. I will rejoice. Job says that when men say there is a falling down or there is a casting down I will declare there is a lifting that is the truth the fact is you are sick that's true that's the fact but the truth is your healing has already been secured Amen. praise be to Jesus Amen. we have said that joy is a posture of the heart Look at that kind of posture. It reveals spiritual maturity. In fact, we said in the last teaching that people who don't have joy or people who allow joy to wither from their hearts, they are babies. Spiritual infants. Spiritual immature. They have just revealed their spiritual status. Who you? Simoto serious namungu. Let me tell you, there are dimensions when you touch and journey with the Lord. You make, you, 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 you hear people saying, even if there is no heaven, 
even if there is no Jesus, I will still follow him. They have made up a decision. They have come to a place of being content with the Lord. Hapo, People are still being, the joy or the happiness of people are determined by happenings. When you have money, you are happy. When you don't have money, you don't even want to engage. You know, you are so sad, so emotional. You've heard me say this. <laughs> when I have, you will not know. When I don't have, you will still not know. I will still laugh. I will still be joyful. You will see me in church. I will still serve God. Because I know that this thing that I carry cannot be influenced by the surroundings. Little pressure. When we took a pressure kadogo, that pressure destabilizes your heart. Destabilizes your heart. And you are willing to let go of that joy that was sponsoring your strength. Una chilia. Okay, how will you stand? He said that after all is done, stand. Stand. Take ye the full arm of, 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 of the Lord. He said that after all is done, stand. How will you stand without strength? Chochote unafanya na manunguliko. You are very well. Mungu hawezi kupatia mazao. Ya pili, Mungu hawezi intervene kwa your situation. You know, you know why God has not yet intervened? You are, you are prosecuting prayers from a place of grief, complaining. You are not, you are not prosecuting prayer from a place of truth. Mesema. He will make me walk on high places. To the chief musician which my strings. You want exaltation? You want promotion? No joy. Forget about it. The best promotion that God will ever give to a man. He'll make sure that joy is for I will never ever complain when I'm serving God. And I ask the Lord to help me. Help me not to complain. Help me to keep this joy which is my strength. Because the whole business of keeping your heart is your entire jurisdiction and responsibility. It is yours. It is not the Lord's. How many desire divine intervention? How many desire divine intervention? Keep the joy of the Lord. Keep the joy of the Lord. Maybe the doctors would have given you or they have given you their report. But let me tell you something. Keep the joy. Keep the joy. That joy is proof that you have secured divine intervention. Praise be to God. Praise be to Jesus. I feel like saying this as I close. We were talking about the access power of joy or the spirit of joy. And uh, today I just want to touch on areas that I was not able to touch. Just to bring us to a place of more understanding by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise be to Jesus. Amen, amen. Sunday was amazing. And I thank God for the word that came, that he wants us to do all things with joy. Amen. amen. There is an access power that is captured within the spirit of joy. Kama hauna joy. I don't know what is joy in Kiswahili. Will someone, you know, get that for me? <laughs> 